Well, it, it's true, Karen, actually, that, that so far things have worked out a bit better than probably many people had expected. And particularly through COVID, of course, the huge support, fiscal and monetary support, did actually shield the banking system from, from credit losses. Um, but as we're looking at it now, we are actually seeing a pickup um, in impairments across the banking sector. It's not, it's not one that people should be alarmed about. So to give you a sense of it, 1% or so, just over 1% of mortgages are in arrears. That number was that high as recently as 2018. And at the financial crisis, it was 3.6%. So it's going up, but from a very low base, and we've got a close eye on it. Sam, to what extent, though, has the, this S part in ESG altered those uh, non-performing loans at this point? Because we know some of the banks are now required to, to not move these loans into non-performing ones. They work with some of the customers. They don't want to close out some of the mortgages or loans too early. They want to ensure there's a sort of community role that they have at this point. Is that a change versus the last financial crisis? I don't think it is a big change, really, Karen. I mean, banks have always got to take... a uh, a pragmatic and commercial view is what is the best way through a situation. And, and sometimes the best thing to do is actually pull the ripcord and, and close down the loan. Uh, in other cases, actually, it will be better to give the customer some more time to deal with it. But, but one, one thing that has changed, I think, in line with what you're saying, is that the, you know, the conduct regulation we have in this country is quite a bit stronger. And it is true that our colleagues at our sister authority and the Financial Conduct Authority are very mindful of trust customers being treated fairly in those situations. But look, I think that's a good thing. And I don't think there's any risk in that to financial stability. So, I mean, the wash up from the banking crisis from earlier this year, I mean, there are ripples from across the United States to the UK around SVB. What do you think that means in terms of how safe some of the banks here from challenger banks to the mainstream banks? What's the health of in at this point? Look, the, the banking system, uh, is massively stronger than it was in the financial crisis. Uh, and to give you one example of that, you know, we back in the financial crisis, the amount of capital we had relative to risk-weighted assets, if you measured it as today, was about five percent. It's now about fifteen percent. That number is actually a bit higher for the for the smaller banks, about eighteen percent. Um, but look, look, on the other side of the coin, you know, we do choose to run risk in our banking system because it lets. And you know, people should remember that we run a banking system on about 20 times leave it. Now, that by historical standards is not bad, but there is risk there. Um, Sam, let me just expand. I was going to ask you about challenges as well, but I think you two have covered it pretty much as well. Um, where are the biggest cracks that you spend most of your time worrying about in the British financial system as well? I, I appreciate what you two have already said about challenger banks. I think, uh, again, the footing and, and the, uh, the treatment of RWA from the big banks, it looks like we, at the moment, we don't look like we're going back to the bad old days of the Northern Rock time situation. But I mean, should, and, and let me lead the witness a little bit on this one. Do we need to worry a little bit more about the shadow banking sector? So, look, that, that is a worry that we have. Um, and, you know, there's a story in the FT today about one aspect of that that the biz has been uh, warning about. Um, the best example of why we should worry about it is, uh, you may remember, I'm sure you would have covered it at the time, um, a small family office called Archegos went bust. And when it went bust, it delivered a $10 billion hit into the global banking system. That's a truly staggering and extraordinary number and, you know, the best evidence that you know, shadow banks can still be pretty painful for well, the system. Obviously, in another way, you know, we had a breakdown in the, in the UK financial system in September of last year. That was outside the banking system, but that did present a risk. So we have to be very alert for that. The, the one other, um, uh, Steve, that I would add at the moment is we are, of course, like everybody else, interested in commercial real estate. Um, and we're particularly interested in what's happening in the property market in China because some of our banks are very active there and they have quite a significant slowdown at the moment.